right now, live at 5. I wish the new administration great luck and great success. I think they'll have great success. An unusual yet peaceful transfer of power. I, Joseph Robinette Biden Jr., do solemnly swear. The 46th president of the United States takes the sacred vow. So oh, help me God. Congratulations, Mr. Thank president. You. To lead the United States of America. Welcome to the CBS 3 News Live at 5. Today we witness the end of one chapter and the beginning of another in American history. Here's a live look at the United States Capitol where democracy played out before our eyes after what has been a contentious year for many. But today, the foundation of this nation persevered as the next president of the United States took the oath of office. Good evening and thanks for joining us. I'm Kristen Bakke. At a time when so many of the inaugural traditions we have come to expect have been absent, one thing stayed the same. The new president of the United States took the oath of office. As Natalie Brand reports from Capitol Hill, President Joseph Biden called for unity moments after being sworn in. I, Joseph Robinette Biden Jr., do solemnly swear. After taking the oath of office, President Joseph R. Biden declared democracy has prevailed. I will be a president for all Americans, all Americans. Former presidents Barack Obama, George W. Bush, and Bill Clinton were on hand for the transfer of power, as well as outgoing Vice President Mike Pence. So help me God. So help me God. Pence's successor, Kamala Harris, made history, becoming not only the first woman, but the first black person and first person of South Asian descent to become vice president. Speaking at the Capitol just two weeks after rioters stormed the building, the 46th president said unity is the only path forward. My whole soul is in this, bringing America together, uniting our people, uniting our nation. And I ask every American to join me in this cause. Well, today was steeped in tradition. Only a small, socially distanced group attended the ceremony because of the coronavirus pandemic and increased security concerns. The National Mall, usually crowded with supporters, was instead filled with flags. On stage, an array of star power. Amazing grace. Notably absent, former President Donald Trump, who declined to greet his successor as he hinted at a political return. We will be back in some form. I wish the new administration great luck and great success. Following a gift exchange with congressional leaders, President Biden and Vice President Harris attended a wreath laying at the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier at Arlington National Cemetery. The president and first lady then kicked off the mostly virtual inaugural parade with a walk along Pennsylvania Avenue. President Biden launched his administration with more than a dozen executive actions addressing issues from the pandemic to climate change. As President Trump's term ends and Joe Biden's begins, leaders across the globe are weighing in on the transition of power. In Brussels, the European Commission president said the inauguration shows the resilience of American democracy. This new dawn in America is the moment we've been waiting for so long. Europe is ready for a new start with our oldest and most trusted partner. Government officials in China say they hope President Biden will repair, quote, serious damage in relations caused by the Trump presidency. In his final hours of office, President Trump granted 73 pardons and 70 commutations. That includes two Minnesotans convicted of drug charges. On his final day in office, Trump pardoned 46-year-old Cassandra Kosowski of Moorhead. She was convicted of conspiring to sell drugs transported from Texas to North Dakota. She served more than seven years of an 18-year sentence. Trump also pardoned John Wall, a 63-year-old Prior Lake man who was convicted of a drug charge in 1992. He served five years in prison and four years of supervised release. Minnesota's U.S. Senator Amy Klobuchar took the spotlight earlier today at President Joe Biden's and Vice President Kamala Harris's inauguration as she delivered the welcoming remarks for the ceremony. CBS 3's John Cardinelli listened in to her remarks. John, what was her speech centered around? 
Kristen Klobuchar used her introductory speech to remind Americans that democracy could not be taken for granted. She also talked about how the United States Capitol is a symbol of sacred trust between the nation's leaders and its people. Klobuchar, a Democrat, says the induction ceremony itself is accumulation of 244 years of democracy as it is the moment when a leader is brought forward by the people. She went on to say the insurrection at the Capitol just two weeks ago awakened Americans to their responsibility to carry the torch for democracy. Klobuchar says today is the day when our democracy picks itself up, brushes off the dust, and does what America always does, move forward as a nation. Now it falls on all of us, not just the two leaders we are inaugurating today, to take up the torch of our democracy, not as a weapon of political arson, but as an instrument for good. Klobuchar also said today will be remembered in history as Vice President Kamala Harris is the first female and person of color to hold the office. Klobuchar ended her speech saying America is a country of so much good, and as long as we remember that, anything is possible. I think that's a statement everyone can get behind. John Cardinelli in the newsroom for us tonight. Thanks, John. Meanwhile, Minnesota Congressman Pete Stauber says he's ready to welcome in this new administration. Stauber was in the crowd during today's events in D.C. He tweeted shortly before the oath, saying he wishes the incoming president the best of luck. Stauber added he's ready to find common ground with the Biden administration when possible in order to move the country forward. Pictured with Stauber there is his friend Jason George. George is a business manager for the local 49 union, which represents workers in mining, construction, and other industries. Today's ceremonies brought about a lot of firsts, and for Northlanders, they spent the day reflecting on this moment in history. University of Minnesota Duluth professor Cindy Rugely says the inauguration is a ceremonial way to welcome the new administration into the White House, adding it's the beginning of a new chapter and gives the president an opportunity to reach out to those who did or didn't vote for them. Rugely and her students watched the inauguration this morning. She said Kamala Harris being sworn in as the first female and person of color to be vice president got a lot of attention. So help me God. Oh, right. Actually started clapping in the classroom after she after she took the oath, and that was consistent of students who I know have more conservative beliefs, more Republican beliefs, and students who are more Democratic. Rugely says the COVID-19 pandemic largely impacted the inauguration as there weren't the typical large crowds. Dave's here for a first look at the weather. The sun was out shining today. What a nice sight. At least briefly, and now yeah. it's filled back in as a low pressure system brings a chance for light snow overnight. So let's take a look at the Doppler, which shows there are a few snow showers popping up across the Canadian border. And that's where the heaviest of the snow could be, if we can call an inch or two heavy. So flurries tonight and going through Thursday morning in Minnesota, but perhaps a little bit longer in Wisconsin and the Upper Peninsula as that lower pressure system indeed tracks by. The chance for payoff really is only about 30 percent but uh, it looks like according to the radar it is going to pay off and accumulations then by the time we get in through Thursday evening could be upwards of an inch for places like Ely and into the snow belt maybe an inch to an inch and a half for places like Ironwood the rest of us a trace to maybe a half of an inch so not a huge deal but a better chance for snow is coming for snow fans for part of the weekend and I'll talk about what part of the weekend that's going to be coming up in just a bit Okay, thanks, Dave. Still to come on Live at 5, a traditional summer event in Hermantown is canceled for the second year in a row. Plus, Sawyer County health officials are looking for community members to step up as more vaccines become available. City by City is up next. You're watching Live at 5 with Kristen Vaki, Anthony Matt, and weather with meteorologist Dave Anderson on Live Local CBS 3. For coverage that matters most to you, tune to CBS3. Being overweight may lead to high blood pressure, diabetes, heart disease, a weakened immune system, and can make COVID-19 even more risky. At Healthy Systems USA, get your free weight loss consultation from the comfort of your own home. Call or go to HealthySystemsUSA.com. It's still hard to find a spot, just easier to park. Still the big move, just more moving. Still singing, just more in tune. Still the gang's all here, just less are we there yet. The Chevy family of SUVs, making life's journey just better. 
Get a $5,500 cash allowance on most 2020 Equinox models. Plus, current Chevy owners with an eligible GM credit card get an additional $1,750 total allowance. Visit truenorthchevydealers.com. Wash your hands. Wear a mask. Mantén distancia. Stay home when you're sick. Slow the spread. We can do this together. Mariah Haberman here from Discover Wisconsin. Join me and the rest of the crew every week on this station for all things Wisconsin. Continue the adventure on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and discoverwisconsin.com. Plus, subscribe to the Cabin Podcast, available wherever you listen to your favorite podcasts. Fire threatens everything in its path. When it threatens our communities, we respond. We bring the fight to the front line. The Army National Guard stands ready because sometimes the front lines are in our own backyard. We will always be there when our community needs us the most. Find out more about serving your community part-time by visiting nationalguard.com. I have lost 25 pounds and I'm still going strong. Super easy. You follow the program and you lose weight. It's just that simple. If you've got that, don't worry about that. Healthy Systems USA. Welcome back to the CBS 3 News Live at 5. Here's a live look from Silver Bay on this inauguration day. Dave will be in with your full forecast in just a few minutes, but first, let's head around the Northland. A Wisconsin county is looking for volunteers to help get more people vaccinated. Plus, if your family is struggling because of the pandemic, an Iron Range organization is stepping up to help. All of that and more as we take you around the Northland, city by city. Yesterday we told you Wisconsin is making plans to begin vaccinating the next group of people eligible. To prepare for that surge, Sawyer County is asking for help from community members. Sawyer County Health Care Officer Julia Lyons said they need everyone in the community to come together to get this done. To expand community clinics, help is needed with tasks such as staffing phone lines and assisting registrations. Those with medical training, such as nurses, doctors, or those with EMT training, are also needed to assist with Im immunizations. Anyone interested in helping should email jlyons at sawyerhs.wi.us with the subject line of vaccine volunteer, and we'll have that email on our website. Now to Hermantown, where sadly, due to the pandemic, this year will bring another summer with no summer fest. Organizer Bob Swanstrom made the difficult decision this week to cancel the 2021 event, but already has dates set for 2022. Bob noted the importance of everyone's safety and health in this tough decision, but also said to be sure to support the community businesses that make summer fest a special event in the Hermantown community, especially during these challenging times. We'll end things in northern Minnesota where a helping hand is there for Iron Range and Kuchiching County residents whose jobs have been upended by the coronavirus. A United Way of Northeastern Minnesota COVID-19 crisis fund is providing a one-time maximum $1,000 financial assistance to help individuals and families pay basic living expenses. The assistance is aimed at helping people working or living in the United Way of Northeastern Minnesota service territory who have lost jobs or had work hours reduced as a re result of the virus. The $290,000 fund was raised through contributions of individuals, businesses, foundations, and St. Louis County. If there's something going on in your neighborhood that you think we should know about, go ahead and send us an email and it might be featured as we go around the Northland city by city. Still to come on Live at 5, as the change of leadership occurs, Northlanders are reflecting on how we got here and what they hope for the future. At Duluth International Airport, today started at 5 below, finished at 29 above, 10 degrees warmer than normal. Tomorrow it's going to cool down once again, and in between, there's a chance for light snow tonight through a portion of tomorrow. We'll talk about how much and where coming up in just a bit. If you love them enough to crawl into a play place to get them to come down, then surely you'll check NHTSA.gov slash the right seat to make sure they're in the right car seat. 
At Miners National Bank of Eveleth, we know it takes knowledge, dedication, and teamwork to be the home loan experts. With over 115 years and four family generations, we have proven we have the experience to be the best in the business. For your first or next home loan, call the experts you can trust at Miners National Bank. Their teamwork is unmatched, and they will bump out any rough spots along the way. Make your house a home with Miners National Bank. Equal Housing Lender, member FDIC. Hi, I'm Steve Little, owner of Your Home Improvement Company. 2020 was an unbelievable year for all of us. As a family owned and operated business, we have been doing our best to stay focused on you this past year with our zero interest and zero payments until 2022 program. Thank you for allowing us to assist you in updating your most lived in asset during this difficult time, your home. From all of us at Your Home Improvement Company, Bath Planet and my family to yours, have a healthy, happy and safe new year. Join us weeknights for Live at 5 as we go around the Northland city by city. Everything that happens on a day-to-day -day basis in terms of news, no matter what happens in news, weather is always constant, weather is always changing as well, so it's still an important role as the meteorologist to kind of still stay grounded and to kind of just know that role and what to take and kind of just make sure you're delivering what's the most important for your viewers, but then also I like to touch base on the national things. All of those news stories also tie in with weather stories because they do go kind of hand in hand. Watch Jenna and Caitlin in the morning at 5 and 6 a.m. Northwest Outlet is your A.R.E. Truck Topper Headquarters. Coming up tonight, Northlanders reflecting on President Joe Biden's inauguration. The clouds are here, and there's a slight chance for light snow. I'll talk about how much we come to call. Tonight at 6 on Live Local CBS 3. Local news and local weather here on CBS 3. Now, the CBS3 Duluth WeatherMax forecast with meteorologist Dave Anderson. Well, it started chilly again around our region. Number on these temperatures here because we're warming up tonight and through tomorrow and then by tomorrow afternoon temperatures will tumble and our daytime highs will be cooler than our morning lows. Quick look at what's going on live wise here in Two Harbors. Looks pretty nice there. Uh, not much of that flurry chance has paid off there yet but still a 30% shot it could as the night goes on and it could even try to accumulate for a couple of towns which we'll point out here in just a little bit but right now we're pointing at the current conditions in the airport at the airport in the airport it's probably 68 degrees but outside 30 westerly southwesterly winds going 14 miles per hour and our air pressure is getting a little bit low down to 29.41 inches of mercury here as a small trough of lower pressure does pass by the region and that's the trigger for the chance for the light snow tonight and through a portion of tomorrow current temps in the upper peninsula sure have perked up 22 to 25 same deal for northwestern wisconsin 25 in hayward to 32 in superior everybody else in between in minnesota numbers from 17 below to 27 above good job silver bay and uh... fairly warm as well right by the shore in grand marais Low 30s for much of the Mesabi range, upper 20s on the Vermilion, International Falls at 33. Morning low temps may fall to about 20 or so, but tomorrow afternoon high temps, especially up north, may top out only around 10 degrees. So now let's take a look at the Doppler map for our region. And as our low pressure system and its cold front pass by, we're seeing in its wake the triggering of some light snow showers skirting along the Canadian border and then some of them crossing the lake and getting towards the snow belt and wouldn't you know it those are the two zones that are going to have the best chance for accumulating snows tonight and through tomorrow border country you may go one to two inches snow belt one to two for you guys as well and the rest of us are looking for about a trace to an inch but a bigger chance for snow will be coming our way on Sunday after the return of cooler weather on Friday so after warmer temps tonight and early tomorrow morning, an Arctic chill comes again for Friday and Saturday, sending readings below zero again for morning lows. Tonight in Minnesota, fairly mild, about 10 to 24 with a 30% chance for light snow. And those are above zero readings. For Wisconsin and Michigan, back towards the warm spell, at least for a tiny bit, 20 to 23 above for your low temps. 
30% chance for the light snow overnight. And then a 30% chance through the afternoon for folks in Wisconsin and Michigan to get a little more light snow. High temps, though, start to fall only 14 to 19 by tomorrow afternoon. Minnesota numbers could go anywhere from 7 in International Falls to 20 right by the lake with that 30% chance for more light snow in the morning. Here's our extended forecast. When the cold comes back to call, Friday morning will be 5 below here at the head of the lakes, probably colder inland, 10 above for a high, but with sunshine, should be pretty nice. Then Sunday, there's a 60% chance of snow returning, and right now it looks like we could get 1 to 3 region-wide out of the deal. We'll keep our eyes on that one and update you on it again as early as 6 o'clock tonight. Thanks, Dave. National Guard members from across the Northland were in the nation's capital today supporting security efforts. This video shows Minnesota Air National Guardsmen arriving at their assigned location, checking their gear and grabbing a quick bite to eat. Members of Duluth's 148th Fighter Wing are among them. A Northland troop from the 194 Cavalry Squadron is also in D.C. 850 Minnesota Guard members deployed. Meanwhile, 550 members of the Wisconsin National Guard also deployed to D.C. They were among the 25,000 Guard members from all 50 states. It's an unprecedented show of force in our nation's capital, ensuring security during the inauguration. Here's a live look at the Wisconsin State Capitol in Madison tonight. Things there were quiet again today with fewer law enforcement than what we saw Sunday as officials planned for possible protests this inauguration day. But as our Wisconsin affiliates report, it's a much calmer atmosphere than what authorities were expecting. Capitol Bureau Chief A.J. Bayatpour joins us with more. We are not seeing the armored trucks and the barricades blocking all circle drives around the state capitol building. Also a difference from Sunday, police are not diverting traffic off of the inner square. Cars have been able to circle throughout the day. Instead, what's been really remarkable about this day is how few people there have been, period. There were police making laps around the building, including dogs sniffing trash cans as they passed by, but that's mainly been it. Among the people we have seen at and around the capitol today, were some UW students who've returned to Madison and wanted to come by the Capitol to see if there would be a scene at all today. I think we all heard a lot of rumors and stuff, um, but I wasn't really that nervous. I feel like they're going to be pretty well prepared for everything. I got back two days ago. I was driving up here and also feeling anxious about things going on. We, I think I was expecting a bit more of a presence at the Capitol today, but I'm relieved that it's it's calm and just, you know, not really that much going on. We did reach out to State Capitol Police for their perspective on this day. However, we have yet to hear her back. Going back to Sunday, a number of businesses around the Capitol Square closed on Sunday and put up signs indicating they would remain closed through today. However, we did talk to some other business owners who are open, including one who says, in this case, he's glad to have had a very slow day. Reporting outside the Wisconsin State Capitol, I'm A.J. Bayatpour. And in Minnesota, it was a quiet day at the state's Capitol building in St. Paul. Minnesota State Troopers and National Guard soldiers are on hand in case any violence would possibly break out. But it has been very calm there for days now. Still to come, sending a message of hope. We'll hear the words of a 22-year-old who is turning heads after a poetry reading at the inauguration right after the break. I lost a ton of weight, 93 pounds. I feel good, I look good. 75 days on the program, I've lost 53 pounds, 41 and a half inches. You're not hungry. If you've got that, don't worry about that. Healthy Systems USA. Hi, John with Prime Appliance, and this is one of the best times of the year to buy appliances because manufacturers are sending us their new models weekly, and we need the room, so we're closing out last year's models at rock-bottom prices. Save now on this Frigidaire laundry pair with an electric dryer, just $12.98, or this oversized capacity Samsung set in black stainless, now only $16.49. Financing always available. Have our pros deliver and install or take it home today. Prime Appliance, the best place to buy your appliances. Some things are just too important to leave out of your day. Make sure we aren't one of them. Live, local, CBS 3.
It's a part of Minnesota's history that affects everyone in the Northland still to this day. From environmental issues to economics and so much more. Join me, Kristen Bakke, every Tuesday for Ion Mining. A fair and unbiased report that answers the tough questions surrounding the world of mining. Eye on Mining with Kristen Bakke. Tuesdays at 10 only on live local CBS3. Brought to you by Iron Mining Association. This year has been just a huge year. We've had everything going on with the pandemic. It's hard to not have your heart go out to those people, the millions that have been impacted by that. That's why we do what we do, you know, to try and keep people in the know. What's going on with this? When is it going to end? When's the vaccine going to be here? How is this impacting you? Where are resources to help you get through the pandemic and keep you and your family safe through all of this? For coverage that matters most to you, tune to live local CBS 3. Our schools provide so much more than just learning support. The school year didn't start out the way that we wanted it to, but who's to say it won't be better at the end? We need to slow the spread so our economy has a chance to recover. So our kids can be in school and be on the ice. And we can keep our friends and families safe. For our students and teachers. For our essential workers. For the people you love. Thank you for doing your part. Go Hunters! Overweight may lead to high blood pressure, diabetes, heart disease, a weakened immune system, and can make COVID-19 even more risky. At Healthy Systems USA, get your free weight loss consultation from the comfort of your own home. Call or go to HealthySystemsUSA.com. When severe weather hits, tune to CBS3 for up-to-date coverage morning and night. From Lady Gaga to Jennifer Lopez, Garth Brooks, and more, today's inaugural events featured many talented artists. But there was one performer who caught the attention of so many with her words. 22-year-old Amanda Gorman read her poem entitled, The Hill We Climb. The nation's first ever youth poet laureate called for unity as she spoke at President Biden's inauguration today. Take a listen. When day comes, we ask ourselves, where can we find light in this never-ending shade. The loss we carry, a sea we must wade. We've braved the belly of the beast. We've learned that quiet isn't always peace. And the norms and notions of what just is, isn't always just is. Gorman started writing poems when she was a child, but found it terrifying to perform due to a speech impediment. She overcame that fear by drawing confidence from Martin Luther King Jr. and former President Barack Obama. Coming up on the CBS Evening News, today was a majestic day in Washington with a peaceful transfer of power. From Gaga to Garth, we'll bring you the sights and sounds of an inauguration unlike any other. We've got that and more news tonight here on the CBS Evening News. Change the future of medicine from the convenience of home. Join the All of Us Research Program to help improve health research and speed up medical breakthroughs. Visit EssentiaHealth.org slash All of Us to learn more. At Super One Foods, we go to great measures to deliver you with top quality meat every day. Try our Smithfield Country Style Ribs for only $1 per pound. And get bone-in chicken breast for just $1 per pound. Plus, we provide the best of the best in fresh produce. Get Dole Head Lettuce for just $1 each. And get one pound of Green Giant Baby Carrots for just $1 each. Through all that we do, we've got you in mind. Super One Foods, serving you lower prices and better choices. We're in your neighborhood with news that matters to you. For the Christmas weekend has come and gone. A six-month search has ended in Ashland. And folks accepted focused. a proposal to turn the broke down calendar. For 2021 was set at 17. Join us weeknights. We're live at 5 as we go around the Northland city by city. Everything that happens on a day-to-day -day basis in terms of news, no matter what happens in news, weather is always constant, weather is always changing as well, so it's still an important role as the meteorologist to kind of still stay grounded and to kind of just know that role and what to take and kind of just make sure you're delivering what's the most important for your viewers, but then also I like to touch base on the national things. All of those news stories also tie in with weather stories because they do go kind of hand in hand. Watch Jenna and Caitlin in the morning at 5 and 6 a.m. Skilled trade workers are the backbone of every community and also the Army National Guard. Soldiers get paid training to keep the power flowing, engines running, and supplies moving. 
Army National Guard soldiers are learning skills that can set them up for success with companies looking to hire the best. The Army National Guard basically threw my resume for me. Find out how you can learn a trade and serve part-time for your community and country by visiting NationalGuard.com. Men's wardrobe provided by Mainstream Fashions for Men. Celebrating 30 years in business in 2021 with 30% off storewide. Downtown Duluth. Welcome back to the CBS 3 News Live at 5. Here's a live look from the White House on the first night of now President Biden's administration. Let's take a look back at today's top story and we'll see what's coming up later tonight. In what was an unusual atmosphere for a presidential inauguration, now President Biden was sworn in as the 46th president of the United States. Surrounded by bipartisan lawmakers, former presidents, and his family, the president had a full day of ceremonial, ceremonial events surrounding the inauguration, where he took the oath of office. President Biden has plans to sign a series of executive actions that reverse his predecessor's orders on immigration, climate change, and the handling of the pandemic. And coming up tonight at 6, President Biden is expected to give his first address to the nation as president. We will carry some of his address during the 6 p.m. news right here on CBS 3. That's your news at 5. The CBS Evening News is next. We'll see you at 6.